blessed family. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm judging by the comments and the uh, responses to things I'm posting on Instagram because I've been more active on Instagram lately because I don't have a lot to say. There's so much people talking right now that it's just even overwhelming to me a bit. So I haven't really been saying much as you can tell by the uploads. Um, but I wanted to address something because a couple things came up recently. And every day that I put off making this video, something new comes up. So this is a, I, I do believe time has been ramping up. And the scripture does say that in this time, time would go by faster. Um, so I wanted to address the, uh, a couple things. There are some articles that came up. One about, um, uh, a vaccine or a vaccine passport or it's kind of alluding to the idea that people would uh, would all globally would be expected to take a vaccine and um, that will be their passport to kind of to move freely that's a huge concern to me I also wanted to address um, the idea that um, some people are still on the idea that in spite of the fact that we are enduring some hardship right now, some constraints to our usual free walking back and forth, uh, that people are not realizing that Christians are going to experience something from the West. And we're not going to just be zapped out of here and not experience anything. And we need to look, kind of reflect on Christians in the past and how they have had to endure hardship. Even Christians right now in other parts of the globe particularly in com communist countries, have been martyred for their faith. So I really am trying to emphasize that people who are Christian, particularly, especially if you're convicted that you're going to serve our Heavenly Father no matter what, need to put aside the idea of how church was before. Okay, the idea of just getting dressed to go to church on Sunday and leaving church and then going about your merry way. It's not, we're not, we're past that now, as you can probably already see. Um, I think the enemy meant all this for evil, but of course our Heavenly Father is using it for his good because a lot of us who have gone through a period of purification have been, uh, I, uh, when my journey started, I, w I looked a lot younger, I felt a lot younger, actually much a lot stronger than I was before because of the working out and the diet that has changed, but in relation to the years, a lot of people I've, saw, I've seen in my lifetime take trips and you know, embark on a lot of different things that I, in my imagination, thought I would have had a chance to experience and didn't. So this whole lockdown has been an opportunity to kind of really get closer to our Heavenly Father and to delve into scripture more so and to listen to particular sermons that have been recommended for me to listen to. And um, it actually has been feeling good because it, before, I, I don't think I, I, I emphasize this enough, how difficult it was for me to find a space to really seek our Heavenly Father to praise and worship and all kind of things. So... This has been great for me. So again, again, I'm going to emphasize as much as the enemy meant it for evil, our Heavenly Father is using it for his good. I've been getting a lot of messages about um, the enemy uh, ramping it up. And I have definitely experienced this. Definitely. I don't know if I'm going to share the story in detail. But I'll just let you know that uh, um, I, was, I was supposed to do a fast a long time ago. I do st still fast. And I just finished my first meal for the day. It's about 4 o'clock right now. Or five, and um, I was supposed to do complete fast, which I can. Like I mean, I, when I eat, I, feel, I actually don't even feel hungry when I eat. I just eat because I haven't eaten all day, but I could go the full day without eating. And it's kind of been brought to my attention. I probably should be doing that and seeking our heavenly Father more, and so I probably will. I won't tell you when. Of course, it's it's between me and God, of course. Anyway, the point of this video is I wanted to address the. Um, the recent article I came across in relations to um, there being Bill Gates coming up with a vaccine. They're saying a potential vaccine. In the title, it says potential vaccine. And they're saying that the, the first patient will be receiving it the date of the vaccine, uh, the date of the article. And to me, um, that's concerning in so many ways because um, this particular vaccine, the way that Bill Gates has been talking about it, um, not only the overview is that it will change our DNA, okay? And the way he's describing it, it fits this prophecy because he's talking about it being something that um, it's like a digital, what was it? It was a digital passport, 
a digital passport. So it kind of marks us. It kind of is supposedly is connected to the internet. So it's besides being able to mark whether people are healthy or not, it will be able to track all different things, our finances, our whereabouts, all that kind of thing. So I, I mean, I did mention before my in a, in a Earl older video that I have been marked and have been followed and all kind of stuff. I don't need to emphasize that anymore. It's obvious that the globe has been, um, people have been monitored all along, and that they have va face recognition technology that they can mark and they can find anyone they want anywhere in, on the globe. So um, that's not unusual um, for me, but it's going to be unusual for, for, for you all because the, although you have been monitored and marked, Unlike people in China and other countries, you didn't, you didn't feel it, but you will feel it now, okay? It's going to be a challenge for people who say they're Christian to stand up for righteousness in this hour. It's not going to be easy. Um, and I think it's kind of been a setup, to be honest. A lot of people who are say they're Christian in the, in the Western society have been spoiled. They go to church, they get dressed up, they don't have difficulty walking to their building, walking out. But you're starting to see now that that's become... A challenge now they're going to Bill Gates has been talking about the globe in its entirety being vaccinated which is absurd okay I, I don't take medication at all our Heavenly Father's led me to change my diet to abstain from meat and other things too as you can see by my face I was disobedient recently and um, that's part of the little thing I went through <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, my face always shows that if you see me, I do a video and you see little spots on my face, you know that I was naughty, very naughty. So, um, I'm back on track. I've been working on, I'm actually very extremely strong. I do have a layer of, of excess weight that I'd like to lose. It's not extreme, but it's not where I want to be. I'm not far from where I want to be right now. So I'm not, I'm not feeling bad about it, but I, do, and I feel strong and healthy and I can do workouts probably all day. I work, I work out fasted, which is to me amazing. There's a day in my life I would never have thought I could do that. So um, I'm on the right track, back on track. And I'm thankful because, uh, I, that's a side note. I'm, I'm, I'm veering off. Anyway, the point of this video is, like I get, I said, uh, is that there's some things that they've been stating, cool hints they've been dropping in the media. Uh, one about the digital passport digital passport think about what that means if everyone had a digital passport what would that mean um, they're also talking about global vaccinations so that would mean that they would have to they're trying to enforce that everyone on the globe get vaccinated um, they're also talking about the pope also mentioned um the pope also mentioned a basic wage that kind of alludes to the idea that um, everyone would be receiving, no matter what they did, they'd be receiving a wage, a wage, almost like what's happening right now. Supposedly like right now people are being told unless their job is essential to stay home and their, their livelihood is being supplemented by the government. All right. So those are three major concerns or things that came up that were concerning to me that I felt that I needed to bring this to your attention. The global vaccination, the basic wage and the digital passport. Now, um, I had did a video before in relations to uh, Romans 13. Romans 13, it, 1 and 2. Uh, it's, uh, it's the scripture that uh, many have uh, used in the past to to sway Christians to abide, to abide by the law. It basically says that you need to blindly listen to what the government is saying um, because they are the governing, the overseers, the leadership of the country, the globe, or whatever else. First of all, you need to read Romans 13 in its entirety. Okay, it speaks about doing good versus doing evil. Romans, Romans 13, as far as I can see, Romans 12 kind of alludes to that as well. So I'm going to suggest before people get approached with this scripture by your pastor or whoever else that you need to get familiar with Romans 13 in its entirety. Okay, its entirety then you'll understand more so where I'm going to go next. And that is when I started to, when I, when this was brought to my attention, Romans 13, 1 and 2, I was very concerned about it because I do what the way I've been led to live is by faith. And a lot of it goes against the things that have been put in place society wise. 
Um, but a lot of this has been put in place is corrupt. Um, and the p powers that are, have, have, that are in place right now have, have supported and enforced abortion, murder, pedophilia, um, child abuse, the whole slew of things that have been supported. Um, and this is not my off the top of my head. This is documented bills that have been passed that have been okay with abortion, that have been okay with, you know, when, um, someone commits a crime, murder should not be the answer. Heavenly Father says in his word not to commit, not to commit murder. I could go on and on. Romans 13, when you get closer to the end, it does quote, go over the Ten Commandments. So there has to be a connection between our leadership and what we do and the commandments of our Heavenly Father. But there's there's no way, there's no way on God's green earth <laughs> that our governing body is governed or using the Bible or scripture as a guideline for how they're going to govern our, our um, govern the people. And as I say that, I need to reinforce that our heavenly, we have to answer our heavenly father for everything that we do. Okay. This is our salvation. We need to seek out our salvation with fear and trembling and whether or not your pastor has been telling you this or not, your salvation is your responsibility. Yes. Pastors and whoever is in positions of leadership who are sharing information have to answer to our heavenly father for what they do as well. But we have to seek out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And as I say that, I need you to, and whatever I say and anyone else says, I need you to go to the God, go to our Heavenly Father, and go to Scripture and get confirmation, please. Okay, don't take my word for it. This is, a, this is this was brought to my attention by the Holy Spirit. And I, I'm, I'm sharing it with you because I feel it's a time, based on what I've seen in articles, that they're not sharing on the news. I mean, these are articles that are built to, available to us is this is news but they're not bombarding us with it as they are bombarding us with the numbers of people that have been passing away or they claim that are passing away etc etc okay so when i was praying about romans 13 i was led to daniel 6 and i'm going to tell you i'm going to show you why i think it's important to look into daniel 6 because daniel 6 um, for many reasons, the prophetic book. It's prophetic because it talks about a time in the way future. These dreams that the kings have, were having were about the times I do believe that we're living in now. And on many, even though a lot of pastors weren't, weren't preaching from Revelations, they did preach from Daniel and did, uh, did talk a lot about end times when they talked about Daniel. So Daniel, I believe, works well with Revelation. They work hand in hand. Revelation and Daniel, as well as a few other books, um, Joel and Amos and there's a few others. But anyway, the whole Bible, but Daniel is definitely a prophetic book. And so Daniel 6 was brought to my attention. Why? Because it talks about having faith. I had mentioned this before. I talked about free fall faith, but I really should have probably used Daniel as an example when I talked about that because Daniel... Um, because of the anointing on his life, because our Heavenly Father had protected him, because of his devotion and his reverence for, for our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father protected him and, and therefore used him to his glory. So when Daniel's life was threatened many times in, um, during this, this process in his journey, our Heavenly Father protected him. There was a few times where there were people in positions of influence that were under Daniel, that had been placed under Daniel because of Daniel's um, promotion. Um, they were envious of him and sought to to destroy him, to take his life. And um, I won't read it. I, 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 I did a video before and I did read it, but I think it would be better if you all read it yourselves. So Daniel 6, the whole Daniel 6 in its entirety, basically it talks about how Daniel... Um, was Daniel was thrown into the, the lion's den because the envying presidents, priests, counselors swayed or um, manipulated the, the king to write a statute that pro prohibited, prohibited anyone from worshiping or seeking counsel of anyone besides the king. And so Daniel was devout, right? He he prayed three times a day. He fasted. No. You know, no rich foods, no no pleasant bread. Remember, if you go through Daniel, you'll you'll get that, adjusted that. 
So when the king signed it and then they, of course, caught Daniel praying, they went back to the king and the king, you know, had to follow his his statute and and um, insist and um, commanded that Daniel be thrown in the lion's den, but with remorse, he did not want to do it. All right, so he threw Daniel in the lion's den and, and he had difficulty sleeping that night. He didn't eat, didn't sleep, didn't have anyone playing music for him. It was very a very a very um, um, a very sobering night for him. Right, he didn't sleep. So in the morning. When he got up, he went to the, the lion's den to see if Daniel was okay. And Daniel answered, saying that he was protected, that the lion's mouths were kept closed, and that he did no wrong. Okay? So the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this to your attention is because I do believe in this hour that we need to, first of all, seek the truth in the word. We need to stand for righteousness based on the word and its entirety. We can't just pick pieces out of it. We have to read it based on its the concepts that are in it, okay? The word is living. It's alive. If I read this scripture, if I read this scripture three months ago, it would have had a different meaning for me than it has now. It's alive. It's living. It's is a small, if you look at this book, I've read, I've read many books for the courses I've taken that are much bigger than the Bible in its physical form. But in relation to its contents, this Bible is infinite, Okay. Every answer that we need for anything is in this word. This is our manual for life. All right, so I need you to understand something. You're going to be approached to take this vaccine, which may or may not be the mark of the beast. I don't know for sure. All I know is that this vaccine has been kind of alluded to in Revelation. Revelation 9 verse 6 talks about how people sought to, to die and death escaped them. That this particular vaccine will, will change your DNA, it will make you healthy, which it will it'll fight off this vaccine, which it's claiming to do, but it will also make you immune to like it changes it'll change you um in ways not all have been revealed to me i just know that there was another message given to me and i shared in another video about donald trump had taken something he had taken this already and supposedly it has changed him that he know as much as he talks about advocating for righteousness or whatever else people say that's what he's doing um it supposedly makes you healthier. It makes you look younger. This is the basically the, the enemy's way of mimicking our Heavenly Father. Fasting does the same thing. If you abstain from food for a period of time, your body has a chance to rest and repair. All right, so I need you to consider praying about this. Um, Daniel 6 and Romans 13, both in their entirety. Um, I feel a lot better after having read all of Romans 13 and Daniel 6. Um, Daniel as a whole, because Daniel definitely is a reflection of standing for righteousness no matter what they do. Now, if I was always thinking to myself, if they came to me or made an announcement that everyone would have to take this vaccine, I'm not taking I'm not going to be belligerent about it because our, belt, our Heavenly Father and His Word talks about being rowdy. <laughs> We're not to be doing And that actually is also in Romans 13. When you read it, you'll get that whole idea. Um, but I definitely will not be taking it. Okay, but my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I don't take medication. Once I understand the truth of medication, I don't take medication for anything. Our Heavenly Father has provided all our needs according to His riches and glory. People like to say stuff like God gave us wisdom and so He created medicine. God did not create medicine. Medicine is, does not glorify our Heavenly Father. It glorifies man. Okay, and But by no means do the medication cure us. It masks symptoms. Okay, Because if we can get sick, we can get well. Usually what, what usually ails us is usually the way we live, stress, or the way we eat. All right, so I wanted to definitely share that with you. I do believe this is like an urgent word. Um, I know that a lot of you are home and uh, you have time to listen to Daniel and to Romans, um, the word as a whole. But those two really, for based on what is going on right now, I'm really 
really trying to encourage you to kind of get this in your 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 your, uh, your mind, the back of your mind that church as we knew it is no longer going to be that way. The suit and tie days, unless you're going to do that in your home, are are over. Okay, it's not going to be that way. And if you believe that when they, because I do believe they're going to say that um, things will get back to normal if we just take this vaccine because they're basically already saying that well once we get this vaccine we can get things back on track but no means is it going to be normal there's things are never going to be the same again because if they think this is the solution that means that that tracking everyone and monitoring what people do is the answer that takes away your freedom and by no means does the enemy want us praising and worshiping our heavenly father you do know this you're at the end of this age and you know what that means relations to scripture that means the enemy's time is up and he's collecting souls. Okay, let's let us let's let <laughs> let's let it not be ours and our loved ones. We need to continue to pray fast and seek our Heavenly Father for truth and direction in this hour. I'm hoping that this was helpful. I'm hoping that was healthy. Oh, I felt so much more relief when I read both of these. And I did it last a video last night, but I was actually um quite tired when I did it. I thought I better do a better one and get my act together. <laughs> I don't want you to think that I'm, I do sleep. I just find that whenever the, my Heavenly Father calls me to pray, I do whatever hour that is. So I'm hoping that was helpful. Okay. You are a very special generation. You were marvelously made specifically for this time. So hang in there. You're, you're great. I love you. Our Heavenly Father loves you so much more. Until next time, be blessed.